Now, the truth of the matter, whether you realize it or not, is that Kenya is currently going through a major cleanup yeah, period. Now, I can already hear some of you saying, what cleanup are you talking about? Get out of here, Chris. And I can empathize yeah, with those people who are talking like this. Why? Because many Kenyans were not fully aware of just how rotten, stinking, rotten, smelly the country called Kenya is. In fact, as a result of recent revelations, as a result of recent events that have brought out the true rot inside the country called Kenya, many have given up. Now, you need to realize one thing. Before you do a cleanup, you have to realize that a cleanup is necessary. There can be no cleanup yeah, until those who are supposed to clean up realize how dirty they are and how urgently they need a cleanup. A friend of mine moved into a Kenyan town recently and he was looking for a house and he was shown this house or rather he was told about this house which was perfect. Yeah, he was looking for a three bedroom uh, apartment and the gate was fine. The apartments looked very nice from afar off. Then just as they entered the courtyard, his wife grabbed at his sleeves and told him, let's get out of here. And the agent showing them the houses uh, asked, Mama, kwa nini nini? Now, passing right across the courtyard, yeah, between the car park and where children would ordinarily play, was an open trench of dark, stinking water. The water was from the sinks in the apartment. Apparently, there had been some blockage and then some genius somewhere decided let the water just flow across the courtyard up to the fence and outside yeah, problem solved or so this genius thought now this is precisely how somebody can get very sick but it was not a big deal to any of the many occupants yeah, of those apartments yeah, some of whom had their cars parked outside there many of whom had children, small children, who occasionally or regularly, when they were not going to school, played outside in that courtyard, close to that stinking water. And maybe some of them even did things in that stinking water. But even the agent did not see any big deal. Ay, mama, bwana. Hii kitu, hii ni maji tu, hii ni maji ya sink, hii si maji ya cho, eh? Yep, to the agent, this was no big deal. In fact, he confirmed it later because he pulled my friend aside and said, Oh, pole sana, naona hui mkaka kuna maringo nyingi, lakini chukua hii nyumba, hii nyumba ni mzuri. Na kuambia kwa hii town mzima, hakuna nyumba ingine mzuri kama hii. Translation, your wife is very proud. Just take these houses. There are no other houses better yeah, than this apartment in this entire town. Anyway, my point is, there can be no cleanup if <laughs> the people who are supposed to clean up don't think a cleanup is necessary. So the fact that all this rot is coming out, yeah, it's part of the cleanup process yeah, that Kenya must go through. I dare add that I very strongly believe, beyond any reasonable doubt, that this cleanup is ordained by God Almighty Himself. And I believe. This cleanup shall continue until the current Kenya is unrecognizable. That is, to somebody who left this country before the cleanup started, and that same person comes when the cleanup is complete. And a cleanup is usually painful. And this one is going to be extraordinarily painful. It is also important to note that politically speaking, there are some people who do not think a cleanup of the Kenya as we know it today is necessary. These are the people who are saying the current fight against corruption is just political. It should stop immediately. After all, everybody has stolen. 
even those who are leading the fight against corruption are thieves. Therefore, we should, we should just stop it. Because really, this thing is aimed against our man. Our man who wants to become president at all costs. Our man who must be president. Mpendem spend. Okay, yeah, those guys. Those guys don't believe a cleanup is necessary. Anyway, as we go through the current cleanup exercise of the country called Kenya, there is one very important area that has so far been ignored that, in my view, must be addressed as soon as possible. Indeed, immediately. And this is the area of fall guys, yeah, people who are framed for things they have not done. And some of them, in this country called Kenya, have been made to suffer yeah, terrible punishment for decades for something they never did. And the state knew very well that these people are innocent, but they were still determined to go ahead and punish these people, yeah, frame these people. Why? So that the government would remain blameless yeah, in that terrible thing that had happened. Now, those who read their Bible will know very well that one of the things that greatly angers God Almighty is a false testimony. Framing a person who is completely innocent yeah, to take the punishment of the real criminal in the crime you're punishing. If we're interested in proper healing of Kenya, that is where we must start. Yeah, even before we start prosecuting yeah, corrupt people, that is the place where we must first pass through. Very recently, actually in the run-up to the 2017 general elections, when the IEBC computer guru, Chris Musando, was so brutally murdered, there were some suspects who were picked up. The late Musando's landlord, yeah, and a 17-year-old girl. And Sandoz landlord even appeared in court, yeah, if I can just remind you. However, reason must have prevailed, very fortunately, and the two were released. Now, we all know who had the biggest motive yeah, for murdering Chris Msando. It was not a love triangle gone bad. It wasn't. It wasn't an innocent 17-year-old girl from Nyanza. <laughs> no way. Neither was it his very innocent landlord. You know the day should come when Kenyans should sue their government for insulting the intelligence of the people. Because by arresting his landlord, what were we being told? We were being told that Chris Musando didn't pay his rent, and therefore his landlord said, Hi, yeah, 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 we mutu, I'm a parent. And then he decided to murder him. <laughs> Motive of murder? Rent arrears. <laughs> Gosh, this country of ours. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, let me tell you something new, yeah, that probably you didn't know, yeah, today. If ever you framed a person, yeah, accused a person, and they got punished, yeah, for something they did not do. <laughs> eh? You had better stop what you're doing. Put everything down. And rush. Yeah, don't go slowly. Don't walk. Run. And make amends. Because the punishment which is coming your way. For framing an innocent person. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And let me give you a very practical example. From right here in Kenya. On 5th December 2008, it was a Friday, on the Nairobi Thika Highway, a motorbike yeah, hit an old man, yeah, leaving him with terrible, painful wounds. Yeah, that man ended up dying. A very painful death. Now, you might hear about this incident and say, okay, old men get knocked down by motorbikes all the time. But hold your horses for a minute. Let me give you the identity of this man. The name of this man was Roson Masharia. Now, Roson Masharia 
was bang in the middle of the colonial government scheme to frame a man called Jomo Kenyatta. This is the man whose false evidence yeah, led to the imprisonment of Jomo Kenyatta in 1952 in Kapenguria. Much later, in the 80s, he confessed yeah, that the testimony he gave was totally false, yeah, which was not news to close observers of the whole situation. Because Jomo Kenyatta was a moderate. There was no way Jomo Kenyatta was a member of the Mau Mau. Yeah. Indeed, the Mau Mau had threatened him. Yeah, they had threatened his life several times. Anyway, Roson Masharia said he framed Jomo Kenyatta in return for very many goodies the colonial government promised him. Yeah, they promised to take him abroad. They promised to give him money. They promised him many things. And I believe they fulfilled many of their promises. Yeah, because at the time of his death, this man owned property. Yeah. He owned several rental apartments. Yeah, some on thicker road. Clearly, this very evil thing of framing innocent people was inherited from the colonial government. And those in power yeah, in independent Kenya took this evil thing and ran with it. In my video yesterday, I mentioned a man called Kisilu Mutua, a man who spent 36 years in jail, yeah, and he was accused of being involved in the murder of Pio Gama Pinto, the very first political assassination in Kenya. And remember, this man had been sentenced to hang. In fact, when the judgment was delivered, yeah, it is on record, he screamed in court, Mimi sijaua, Mimi sijaua. Translation, I have not killed, I have not killed. A poor, innocent, illiterate Kenyan, yeah, who had been forced to put his thumbprints, yeah, because he can't read or write, he had been forced to put his thumbprints on a statement that incriminated him. And it was presented before court as a confession from him. And that's what nailed him. And the man, fortunately, yeah, did not go to the gallows. And in 2017, he was awarded 2.5 million, a paltry peanuts, 2.5 million, for the torture he went through yeah, in the hands of the police yeah, in the 60s. He was done many things. His private parts were even pressed yeah, until he passed out, all in, an, in a bid to make sure that he puts his thumbprint on a false statement to nail him. Now, I know Kisilu Mutua went straight to death row. Yeah, those are the cells of people waiting for the hangman's news. And he was with several other inmates. And you can imagine the mental torture as one by one, his colleague, colleagues went into the hangman's news yeah, and were hanged and died. And every day when he woke up in the morning, yeah, for decades, he wondered whether this was the day he would face the hangman. And that day would pass. And then the next day, and then the next day, for three decades. And then you pay this poor man 2.5 million. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now let us be fair, judges here. How can such a country escape the full wrath of Almighty God? How? If Kenya tomorrow faces very bloody judgment from Almighty God, yeah, terrible judgment, who can stand up and say God is unfair? Who? Now, for the sake of the curious, let's put the record straight. This is exactly what happened with the Pio Gamma Pinto assassination. Now, many Kenyans know this old man. Yeah, his name is Feruz Norji. Yeah, a prominent human rights lawyer in Kenya. This man is remembered by most Kenyans for the evidence he gave yeah, before the Supreme Court in the landmark case yeah, on the 2017 presidential elections petition. You know, God Almighty always leaves behind witnesses. Yeah, and this is one of them.
because this man was a close friend of the late Pio Gama Pinto. Bwana Noji is a great Kenyan who has done very many things that will definitely stand the test of time. Now a few months after the assassination of Pio Gama Pinto and when Kisili Mutua had already been sent to the gallows for that crime, Bwana Noji received an anonymous call from somebody who claimed they knew who killed Pinto and they were ready to take Noji to that person who killed Pinto. And he met with this guy and this guy took him all the way to Westlands to a brothel. Now according to this man, the man who killed Pinto, the man who pull, pulled the trigger yeah, and fired those shots that killed Pinto, always wore a red shirt and he very frequently visited this brothel in Westlands. And surprise, surprise, when the man came out of the brothel, sure enough wearing a red shirt, he had no qualms confessing the crime to Bwana Noji. The man told Noji that CID officers had approached him here yeah, for a job, and they told him they were going to pay him 7,000 Kenya shillings. Now in 1965, the Kenya shilling exchanged to the dollar at seven shillings. Yeah, that is, seven shillings was what you needed to pay out to get a dollar, a US dollar. Meaning that if we just to use current exchange rates, that is a hundred thousand Kenya shillings the man was offered to murder Pio Gama Pinto. Yeah, however, that is the, not the only way to gauge the value of that money at the time. Because at that time, a blanket cost 50 cents. Yeah, that's half a shilling. My rough estimate is that in today's terms, yeah, the man was offered about half a million Kenya shillings to murder Pio Gama Pinto. And the assassin had much more information to give. He said on the day of Pinto was murdered, two taxis were involved. Two taxis of the Fiat make. Yeah, that car make, uh, I don't think is in the market anymore. But those cars used to be called Fiat's. And inside the Fiat vehicles were CID officers. Their mission? To make sure that this assassin, you know, the real murderer of Pio Gama Pinto, got away scot-free. No witnesses, no evidence at all to link him back to the crime. Or even more importantly, to link the government to that crime. After Pio Gama Pinto, uh, the next political assassination was that of Tom Boyer. And it was again, the man was framed for it. The crime was pinned on a man called Nahashon Jenga. Now the truth of the matter is that Nahashon Jenga and Tom Boyer were very close. Jenga was a Kano activist yeah, who worked very closely with Tom Boyer. Again, Nahashon Jenga stood trial and he was sentenced to death. Now I've covered this very intensively in the Tom Boyer series on this channel, so let me not repeat myself, and instead let me gloss over very quickly. This time, the state decided to do it differently. Yes, Nashon Jenga was sent to death row, yeah. however, he was sprung out of jail and taken into exile in Ethiopia, where the state helped him to launch a brand new life very far away from home. Now unfortunately, or is it fortunately, an Asian couple visiting Ethiopia positively identified Nashon Jenga in the 80s. And they came back home and started talking about it. It even appeared in the media, in a section of the media. Shortly after that, yeah, other impeccable sources came up with another story. Yeah. They said actually Njenga had finally died, and he had died in a road accident in Ethiopia. Over two decades after the murder of Tom Boyer, did somebody decide finally to get rid of Nahashon Njenga? Yeah, and this evidence that actually the accused person was out of Kenya, had been smuggled out of the country, we will probably never know the truth. However, we know how Tom Boy was murdered. Amazingly, fascinatingly, an eyewitness report 
puts two people at the scene of the crime. And one of them fits the perfect description yeah, of a policeman, yeah, the head of the GSU at the time, a man called Ben Gethi. Ben Gethi is the man who fired the fatal shots that ended the life of Tom Boyer. And from the photographs on your screens right now, you can see why, at least one of the reasons why, Nahashon Jenga was picked as a fall guy. The two men had a striking resemblance to each other. Height and everything. The two could have been twin brothers, identical twins. Now, the assassination of Mutula Kilonzo, Mutula Kilonzo Sr., yeah, father to the current senator of Makweni, marked a significant change in the way assassinations are carried out in Kenya. I've often called it the most high-tech assassination, most sophisticated assassination in the history of Kenya. And it is still extremely sensitive, very sensitive. And therefore what I've done today, I am posting in Club 1999 a copy of my book, How Mtula Was Murdered. But my big point here is that this time, a person was not used as a fall guy. Instead, something else was used as a fall guy. The Viagra drug. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that Viagra is innocent in this case. Fortunately, it is not a person. It's not flesh and blood. And again, in the assassination shortly before that of Mutula Kilonzo Sr., that of George Saitoti, also had a fall guy that was not human. The fall guy was a faulty helicopter. A faulty helicopter that was allegedly trying to fly back to base because of mechanical problems. And in the case of uh, former internal security CS, Joseph Nkaiseri, the fall guy was a heart attack. However, it was an assassination. Again, I will post today uh, a detailed video in Club 1999, one that I've done long before, but I'll just repeat it again for the sake of newer members. Actually, I'll post two sensitive videos, that one of George Saitoti and the one of Joseph Nkaiseri. Yeah, those assassinations, exactly how they were done, how they went down. Anyway, in my view, as we clean up Kenya, we need to compensate the families of these Kenyans yeah, who were killed, assassinated by the state. Financial compensation will not bring back their families, but it is a clear sign of repentance on the part of the Kenyan government. And it will go a long way in healing our country and averting God's terrible judgment on our country for the blood we have spilt and the fall guys that we have produced as criminals and made some of them suffer so much for crimes they never committed. In my view, this needs to be done very urgently because spiritually, Kenya is still on the crosshairs of Almighty God for very serious and terrible judgment. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. We have many new diseases in Africa these days. Cancer was unheard of on these shores in the 70s. So, what has changed? It all comes down to diet, what we actually eat matters a lot. Food is very important and should be considered the foundation of your well-being. And that is why in 2017, we started distributing Biomax products. These are products based on pure wheat grass powder of organic indoor-grown wheat. Very rich in natural fiber, minerals, vitamins and vegetable protein. What is the huge benefit here? Well, it is one single source for important nutrients. Nutrients for complete metabolism. Nutrients for increased immunity. Nutrients to aid in prevention and recovery of diseases including serious diseases like cancer, diabetes, stomach problems and arthritis. 
Call us now for more details. Call 0722-631-555. The number again, 0722-631-555. In 2005, there was a lot of hopelessness amongst Kenyans. The promises of a new Kenya, the promises of a new beginning that we had been given in 2002 during the general elections that had removed Kanu from power were dead in the water. Out of those ashes, the Kumekucha brand was born in May 2005 to vent and to fight for a better Kenya because long-suffering Kenyans have always deserved better. Contrary to propaganda on the web, the Kumekucha blog was never launched as a business enterprise and through the years it has always been self-financed through some very difficult times. Twelve years on and still counting, our basic premise lives on and remains the same. And that's why I'm really, really excited today to announce this golden new opportunity for you to reach your, a huge audience in Kenya and all over the world with the brief commercials for your business. They will of course interrupt our videos just like this message you're taking in. And like the Kumekucha videos, they'll be permanent. And what is more, we are so committed to ensuring that you get the results you desire that we'll allow you to place the spot for free. Yep, you'll not be able to, you'll not pay for it, yeah? You'll only pay for it when you're fully satisfied with the results. Of course, we'll request a small fee for the video production, but it's a pittance. Are we crazy? Oh no, we are not. We're just very sure that you're going to get a result. I mean, 10 million views is not a joke. Why are we doing this? Of course, it will go a long way in helping us cover our video production costs on this channel. But that's not the reason. That's not the main reason. You can call me naive, but I sincerely believe that the more prosperous businesses we have owned by Kenyans, the easier it will be to push through the changes we want. And by prosperous businesses, I don't mean businesses which make money out of corruption, and stealing from public coffers. Those are not businesses, those are criminal enterprises. Anyway, if you have a genuine uh, business, this is a golden opportunity for you and I recommend that you take it on immediately. Get all the details you require in the video description area on this video on YouTube. Thanks so much for listening to me. All for a better Kenya.